Hey everyone, Travis here. Today we're going to take a look at how to calibrate Atomos monitor recorders using a colorimeter. So you may be asking, what is a colorimeter? Well, it's basically a device that measures the amount and quality of light coming off the display, then uses software to create a color accurate profile that is applied to the display. For this video, I'll be demonstrating the i1 Display Pro Plus from X-Rite. Now before I get into that, let's talk about why you should calibrate your monitor. The most important reason is that you want to be sure that your monitors accurately reflect the brightness and color of the devices you recorded them with. Your monitor colors can drift over time and if what you are seeing on your monitor is not accurate, even though it looks great to your eyes, it can look incorrect when displayed on another monitor or device. Therefore, you should be calibrating your monitors on a regular basis. Atomos teamed up with X-Rite to enable Atomos owners to calibrate their recorders using the i1 display devices. There are actually a few different models, and the one I'm using is the i1 Display Pro Plus. If you need to calibrate both SDR and HDR displays, this is the one you will need. There's a link in the description below. I should also point out that this device can calibrate non-Atomos monitors as well. In order to calibrate your Atomos recorder, you will need the Atomos USB-C to Serial LAN-C calibration cable, purchased separately. This is what allows your computer and calibration software to communicate with an Atomos recorder. You will also need to download and install the Calibrate software from the Atomos website. Again, you'll find the link below. The i1 Display Pro Plus is compatible with the Ninja 5 and the 5 Plus, the Shogun 7, Shinobi, Sumo 19, and the Neon line of displays. In this video, I'll walk you through how to calibrate a Ninja 5. The first step is to clean your screen. Since the device is measuring light, a dirty screen could skew the results. Next, power on your monitor and leave it on for at least 30 minutes before calibrating. Then connect the eye display to your Mac or PC. Open the ambient diffuser arm and rotate it to the back position to reveal the i1 display's lens. And then drape the device over your monitor. It has a counterweight on the cable that can be adjusted by squeezing it and sliding it into the desired location. Because the Ninja 5 is so small, you can lay it on its back and set the i1 display directly on the screen. There's a felt pad around the lens to help keep out ambient light, so you want to make sure that the i1 display is flush against the monitor. Next, connect the USB-C to Serial LAN-C calibration cable to your computer, and then to the remote port on your Atomos monitor. Now open the Calibrate software. This app will calibrate the gamut, gamma, and gray tracking. I'll come back to those shortly. Once open, click the Detect button. If set up properly, you should see the name of your Atomos device here. Below, you will see Temperature, D65 and D93 Japan. They stand for 6500 and 9300 Kelvin. 6500 Kelvin is the standard setting for white in the United States and European broadcast monitors. 9300 is the standard white setting for, you guessed it, Japan. From what I understand, this also includes China and Korea. You are unable to change this in the application when working with the Ninja 5. However, when I calibrated the Neon 24, I was able to choose D93. I'm not sure about the other supported Atomos displays, but if you are able to change this for your Atomos, let us know in the comments. Side note, if you're working in a dedicated color correction suite like this one, the ambient light in the room should match these temperature settings. This will help your eyes to judge your image correctly. Once everything is connected correctly, click the Calibrate button. I've heard some people suggest turning off the ambient light so as to not risk causing an inaccurate calibration, and then I've heard others say because of the felt pad around the lens, you shouldn't have to. As long as the device is flush with the screen, I think you're fine either way, but by all means, kill the lights. Over the next few minutes, you will see your Atomos cycle through different colors and brightness. The calibration software is making the Atomos display a range of test images and then compares them with the color profile of the device to see how accurate they are. Once completed, the software installs a calibration LUT to correct the monitor's image. This happens transparently and automatically. We also get some feedback in the graphs above letting us know where our Atomos falls within different measurements. Here are the resulting graphs for both the Ninja 5 and the Neon 24. First is color gamut. Color gamut could also be called color space. To make it easier to see, here are the graphs before calibration. This large shape of color here represents all the colors that the average human eye can see. Both graphs have a triangle representing the Rec. 709 color space. The neon has a second triangle for P3. 
Rec. 709 is the SDR, or Standard Dynamic Range Color Space, for the majority of displays in use today. P3 is an HDR, or High Dynamic Range Color Space, that is just a bit smaller than Rec. 2020. The Neon 24 has an SDR and an HDR mode, which explains the two color gamuts. Now, some of you may be thinking, hey, I thought my Ninja 5 was an HDR monitor. Not quite. While the Ninja 5 is capable of displaying a thousand nits of brightness, it still is operating in the SDR color space or gamut that is Rec. 709. The Ninja 5 will record your footage in HDR, but when monitoring HLG or PQ, the Ninja is tone mapping using their built-in Atomos HDR engine to give you the best representation possible. With that explanation out of the way, here are the graphs after calibration. The dotted line shows the color gamut, and the solid white line shows the native color gamut for the device itself. Think of native as the uncalibrated measurement. You can see in the graph for the Ninja 5 that the color gamut is just slightly off of Rec. 709 and the neon color gamut is very close to P3 and encompasses the Rec. 709 color gamut. Next is gamma. The x-axis of the graph is showing us the luminous percentage of the image being sent to the display. The y-axis is showing us the luminous percentage of the displayed image. As before, the dotted line is where the image should be, and the solid line is what your display is showing. Our Ninja 5 was a bit off, but the Neon 24 is almost spot on. Lastly is gray tracking. Gray tracking is showing you the white point value at different levels of brightness. The dotted line represents the 6500 Kelvin value I talked about earlier. The solid line shows what my monitors were displaying at those values. Again, the Ninja 5 was slightly off, but the Neon 24 is almost spot on again, with the exception of the lowest brightness here. So that's a quick rundown of how to calibrate your Atomos recorder. The Atomos Calibrator 2 app really simplifies the process. I mentioned before that the i1 Display Pro Plus can be used to calibrate other monitors, but it uses a much more sophisticated piece of software that I haven't fully explored yet. Perhaps I'll create another video on the subject if there's a demand for it. Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll take you along with me as I show you how to calibrate my Mac display. And as always, if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe, and thanks for watching.